Let's get right to it, because this week we're multitasking so we can get our boat ready for the wood interior. And that means we have to tackle insulating our boat and then wiring it. That's right, this is Luke and I'm Lori, and we're back at it with our boat restoration project. Thanks to our Patreons and viewers like you. And if you want to be part of our dream of sailing our insulated boat to anywhere in the world, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell. It's a totally free way to keep the journey alive. All right, this week we are tackling insulation because we are going to be going to hot places, we're going to be going to cold places, and a boat like ours, especially, well, any boat, but ours is steel and it will fluctuate in temperature quite significantly, and it might even sweat when um, the temperature changes. So we really want to have an insulation that is waterproof and it's going to keep us comfortable no matter what it's like outside. The key with insulating a steel boat is that the metal is actually a conductor, so when the metal is in contact with air, it's going to change the temperature of the air. So we are going to put in these blocks, which is pretty standard, is to put insulation within these, these frames. Um, but what about the frames itself? Because the frames in contact with the air are going to change the temperature of the air. So we don't exactly know how Mobili Mar is going to install the interior. This is something we're learning along with you guys. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with blocks here. And then once we know the installation pro process, we're gonna start tackling other parts um, of the metal. So everything else is going to be sealed and it's gonna really give us the best atmosphere within the cabin. So in order to do that, we need to do some research on what options were available here in Brazil and what would be best for our boat. The temperature of an environment fluctuates due to three forms of heat transfer, and these must be tackled if we want to have a comfortable cabin and a happy home. Let's start with conduction. This is like when you touch a metal part of the boat on a hot summer day. The heat from the sun has been transferred into the metal and then into your hand. Convection heat transfer is when heat moves through fluids like air or water as they move around like a breeze through an open window or hot air rising to the top of the cabin. Finally, there's radiation. Radiation heat transfer is when heat travels through space without touching anything. It's like when you feel warm sitting next to a campfire even if the fire isn't touching you. The heat travels through the air as infrared waves. We can't see it, but we can feel the heat. Now, we've seen lots of solutions for insulation from gym tiles to camping mats, but here in Brazil, we decided to use a new product called 3TC. 3TC is made up of expanded polystyrene to act against thermal conduction. It then has two sheets of reflective polymer, not aluminum, that block 97% of the infrared rays. They say it's inspired by the same technology used in thermoses and astronaut suits as they are able to control temperature in cold and hot weather. So we purchased a huge roll and decided to give it a try. So let's see how it stacks up against other typical materials like glass wool or mineral wool, aluminum foil, or spray foam by seeing how well each one blocks heat transfer. Foam insulation not only prevents conduction, but it stops convection as well because it eliminates air movement. But on its own, most spray foams do not stop radiation. Aluminum foil is the opposite, though it does a great job stopping radiation. Because it has very little mass on its own, it doesn't stop conduction or convection. Commonly used glass wool or mineral wool insulations prevent convection by holding the air static in its thick material. Conduction is reduced but not entirely eliminated and radiation remains unless it is accompanied by another material. And that brings us to 3TC, who claims that their thin, light, and flexible material does it all. Not only that, but it claims to be energy efficient, act as an acoustic insulation, be waterproof, mildew resistant, non-toxic, recyclable, and easy to install. Hard to believe? Well, we're about to put that to the test. What? Nope. Alright, gotta get the piece of wood now. Not sure I'm gonna do this. 
coming up through this hole. Typical of us. We tend to be overly optimistic about our time and energy. 
energy. What we estimated would take us two days rolled into a whole week where we were able to devote around five hours a day to cutting and fitting the panels into place. The work was really tedious, so to break it up, we decided to head over to the ocean race to walk around and see what boats look like in the water and not on land. The ocean race has been described as the longest and toughest professional sporting event ever. And for around 50 years, sailors have been pushing their limits to sail around the world as fast as they can. I think it goes without saying that the Lahakai wouldn't be winning the ocean race anytime soon. We're going for more slower and steadier pace around the world, but it's nice to size up the competition. But that's enough messing around. This boat isn't gonna finish itself. It's back to work. So in order to do this, I'm assuming that this is a straight line, and this lines up with my straight line here, right? And so it does end up going in an angle, but we're gonna compensate with that triangle afterwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure straight down on each side as if it's going straight up and down. So four, and let's say 73. Let's come. What I've also learned, and I'm not sure if it's a necessary thing, but to work with the bow of this, because it came in a roll, right? So kind of naturally bows. This, you can kind of get it out a little bit, but if you want to work with this as it's pushing itself back into the boat, then it's better that this bows into the boat and not out. I did a couple of them where they bowed out, and it, some of them pop out if they're not like perfectly placed. So it's better if, if you want some tension on the other side for it to be bowing in. All right, let's see if it works. Fits perfectly, okay. But now I have this triangle missing. So remember this triangle and it's gonna fit in this corner right here. Not entirely all of it, so I'm just gonna have to cut out a little tiny piece to compensate. When we measured the boat to sandblast it, we measured 40 square meters. So when we bought this roll, we thought, well, we're not gonna do the bottom of the boat, so let's estimate roughly 30 square meters. We are, I don't know, halfway done maybe? Yeah. I would say roughly halfway done, and this is how much we have left. And we do have a couple of pieces out back here that are extra and we just can't decide if it's gonna be enough or not. It doesn't look like it, but then how many square meters we have. So this is, this is the, the game we're playing right now because it's gonna take another two days at least to order more. Um, and we're trying to get this done as fast as possible. So we're risking it right now. Is 30 square meters enough? So we're going to try to measure how much we have left to see if we can estimate whether or not it's going to be enough. This is going to be fun. Let's go. Go.
problem. Now, we thought that this was only happening in a couple of places, so just a little touch-ups and we're moving forward because we really need to get the interior ready for Bobolimar. But now that we've been looking even more, putting in the insulation, it's been pretty obvious that there's a lot more spots that we did not cover when we put on the white paint, um, on the white coating. So we're going to have to address this now before we move forward, which is very well since we ran out of insulation anyway. So it's really effective when you do spraying. Unfortunately, the angle cannot, it just can't get in some of these places. So it is standard to come in with a paintbrush and get some of these spots. Um, we did have him go over super extra, hoping that it would cover most of them. And we did address a lot of the spots that we had already known were not getting painted by the spray. But unfortunately, there are some more, and it's right on the inside. So we're gonna get a roller up in there and some paintbrush in and see if we can address any of these issues. So we're gonna have to remove all of them and inspect it. But it's kind of double duty. It's not a big deal because we're gonna have to remove most of them anyway. See the blue dot? We have to take them down anyway to be able to tape up the sides because we're just putting this up for, for placement and for sizing. And so when we take it down, we're gonna tape it up. We're also gonna look behind to see if we need to paint. 